Welcome back to Leather Chambers College Reviews on behalf of Summit Kaiju and on behalf of Collect Doll Monsters. And yeah, we're doing a very special, great X plus fig review today. Yes, we are. We've been advocating for this guy. We've been clamoring for this guy. We have been requesting this guy for so long from X plus. And after years and months and days of eager anticipation, he is finally here in our hands. Let's dive head first into this review. And today we're taking a look at the X Plus 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai Marley Collection, the rich exclusive edition of the Shinjuku Sub Sino Battle version of the 1984 Godzilla. Based on his iconic appearance in the iconic, super cool Godzilla film that kickstarted the Heisei Godzilla film series, The Return of Godzilla 1984, also known as Godzilla 1985. And as you can see, I have the beautiful figure here, as well as the box here. So let's get into the box before we get into the figure. Once again, such a great, cool artwork on the box. Yes, it is, with a picture of Godzilla in the background. The picture of the figure in the foreground, the metropolitan city behind Godzilla, you know what I'm saying, the logo of the Japanese title of the film, Godzilla in red print, that at the uh, bottom left-hand corner. Such a really cool artwork on the box. Another thing about these Yuji Sakai boxes, I've talked about that many times before, when it comes to the Yuji Sakai pieces from X+, Plus, they go an extra... Um, step further with the detail on the figure itself, the crisp, the crisp detail on the figure itself, but it also extends that to the artwork on the boxes as well. Now, we know the third centimeters, you know, they have great artwork on the boxes, but once again, the Yuji Sakai's take it to a whole nother level, and I have to say, quite frankly, this is like my favorite artwork of any Yuji Sakai third centimeter box. I think the one that comes close to it is the uh, fourth form of Shin Godzilla. I really love that um, box art on that on, on that box, you know, with the red and all that good stuff. But I have to say, this is probably my new favorite. So, yeah, this is such a great, 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 great box. It's going to be here for presentation purposes. So, let's talk about the man of the hour. Yes, the Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter. Yes, 1984 Godzilla Rick Exclusive Edition. The Shinjuku Sub Sino Battle Version. Oh, wow. You know what? It's a long backstory with this, guys. So let's get head first into the backstory. Um, of course, this is a Yuji Sakai piece, and it was taken from a Yuji Sakai 30cm resin kit. Um, the kit uh, first debuted at the Summer Wonder Festival show back in 2017, I believe. Um, and it was retail like around 43,000 yen, which like comes in um, roughly under $400 US dollars. Um, and we've been asking for the 84 for the longest time. Now, when it comes to the Yuji Sakai 30cm line, right? 
Um, they have done a great job of what they have chosen for that particular line, you know, with the Showa 54, the two Millenniums, GMK and the 2002. Um, but quite frankly, they're really heavy into the Heisei when it comes to the 30 centimeters, you know what I'm saying? While we have a select few from the Showa and the Millennium, as I said, they are really heavy into the Heiseis, you know, with 289s, 291s, and 92, and the most recent um, Sakai before this one, the 95. Um, so, yeah, they're really heavy into the Heisei. And we, as S Plus collectors and fans, were, was, were wondering what was the next Sakai going to be. And even though they're heavy into the Heisei, um, a lot of folks were really didn't want another Heisei Sakai 30 centimeter piece, quite frankly. Um, and I was on that boat too, I'm not going to lie, you know, once again, they're heavy into the Heisei, and, but we only got one shower, so I was advocating for at least one more shower piece, quite frankly, but I did say that if they were to ever go back to the Heisei for the 30 centimeter Sakai line, they need to do an 84, you know what I'm saying, they need to do an 84, even though everybody knows that the Heisei Gosselers are kind of like really similar to each other from 89 all the way to 95, basically, Every version of Godzilla after the 89 is a modified version of it. But I think there's enough of a difference with the 84 Godzilla that we needed to have this be represented in the 30 centimeter Sakai line, right? And I can't, and I, I never forget this. I was on vacation um, late uh, October going to November 2019. And when I go on vacation, mind you, I shut everything off, my phone, social media, and I just concentrate on the vacation and my wife and blah, blah, blah. But every now and then, my wife will jump online just, you know, so we can have service just in case we need to contact our kids or whatever. And she happened to jump on Facebook, and she's a member of the X Plus Clutch Facebook group like I am, right? And her flood line just got it flooded. Um, her timeline got flooded with pictures of the 84 posted by my great friend, Jeremy Souls from Summit Kaiju. Yes, 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 gotta give him a shout out. And that was confirmation that they finally got their hands on the 84 sculpt, you know? And what was also noteworthy about that week, you know, that was the same week that, a, that the Criterion Show of Godzilla Blu-ray collection came out. So to get that and to get news that this guy was coming was really, really a good week. Not to mention, like I said, I was on vacation. And pre order I think, uh, happened, like, not too long after that, quite frankly. Um, and it's just starting to get into collector's hands as we speak, you know, the later part of February 2020. Now, just the ricks are coming into, into collector's hands. Um, the standards, unfortunately, have been delayed, for what I understand, up until maybe next month in March. However... It may look, be a little bit longer than that. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to extend it or put, you know, bad karma on the uh, delayed release date. But with this whole coronavirus thing happening right now, um, X Plus recently put out a statement that, you know, production or at least some of the later releases that they're going to be doing, the shipping dates, you know, may be affected by the coronavirus. Because, you know, for what I understand... Um, X Plus does a bulk of their production of these figures, if not all the production of their, of their figures in China. And if a lot of personnel is hit with this virus, you know, it may affect the production of these figures. I don't really know for sure, but X Plus did put out a statement, like I said, that the, this outbreak of this virus could have effect on the shipping of later releases. So even though they say the standards are dropping in March, you never know. Something may happen. They may have to extend that. Of course, the top priority is the safety of people, quite frankly, in the grand scheme of things. And I know it sucks to wait. Uh, but once again, I'm not trying to put false information out there. I'm just going by what I've read. And even though it's not conclusive, still be aware of that if you are awaiting the standards. You know, it may, it may take a little bit longer or they could release on time, like at the end of March. And I think the reason why they pushed the standards back because they probably had an overwhelming number of standard pre-orders, and they were like, "Hey, we only got maybe just maybe just a few, or at least a good moderate number of ricks, and we already got them ready. So let's just ship them out now, and then worry about the overwhelming numbers of the standard later on." And honestly, this is not the first X Plus release that has done that. that they have done that. Um, the 2014 original release of the uh, gigantic burning Godzilla, the same thing happened, you know. Um, they released the Ricks first, like in July 
late July, early August of that year, and the standards did not come out until like maybe like late September and October. Or most recently, the reverse happened with the uh, gigantic 2019. You know, they released the standards like late November, right, going to early December, while the rates didn't get released until like late December going into January of this year. So there are times where it, that does happen. It's unfortunate, especially if you if you pick the uh, the release is going to be end up getting a later date. You know, of course, it, 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 it sucks to wait, like I said. But once once again, if you are locked in for this guy, trust me, you will be ecstatic once he arrives. Once again, this is the Rick Boy version. It comes with light-up dorsal plates. And I have to say this. This is the Shinjuku Sub-Center Battle version, right? It feels kind of funny that they didn't include a Super X in this release. You know what I'm saying? Because they kind of did that with the 89, right? They brought out the 89 as an open mouth a while ago, a long time ago. I think that was the first in the 30 centimeter Sakai line, right? But then they reissued it a few years later in a closed mouth, and they included not only a lot of dorsal plates, but also an N-scale Super X2. You know what I'm saying? I modified Super X2 open with the fire mirror because they already made like a closed Super X2 that came with the previous 89 release, right? So with this being the, the Shinjuku sub-center battle version, in that battle he did fight Super X. So don't be surprised if they re reissue this guy down the road with the open mouth and then maybe they'll reissue it with a modified or weaponized Super X. You know what I'm saying? Um, that that, that, that kind of struck me as odd why they didn't include a Super X. You know what I'm saying? But still, on his own, this is such a great figure. And I'm going to say this right now. I don't want to put figure of the year on this uh, release just yet because it is the second month of the year. And there's so much that we know is coming with the gigantic Mecha Godzilla, the 30 centimeter 93 Godzilla, Iris, the gigantic Burner Godzilla 2019. You know what I'm saying? There are lots of stuff that's coming. So I don't want to put that on this figure just yet. But I will say that this is the figure to be. This figure really set the bar so high. And it's nice that Epsos is coming out swinging like this. That they come out with such a high quality release of this Godzilla. A Godzilla that we've been wanting for the longest time. Based off one of my most favorite Godzilla films of all time. And one of the earliest Godzilla films I ever saw. Godzilla 1985. So yes, I am in hog heaven by getting this release. And once again, if you got the standard, trust me, you will be in hog heaven once he arrives too. All right, so you know we do things around here. Let's get up close and personal with this guy. And let's, you know, start off with actually, you know, the skin. The skin of Godzilla, you know, is typical tree bark skin, you know, and it's more of a darker color. Now, there is subtle highlights on Godzilla, but it's really subtle. Now, don't, now keep in mind, with this being the, the Shinjuku Sub-Center battle, battle version, of course, this happened at night. Pretty much all the Godzilla scenes, whatever we would see Godzilla on screen, happen either at night or in a dusk situation. So his skin comes across more blackish here, which I really do, which I really do enjoy. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, there is highlights there, but it's really so subtle that you can really catch it in certain lighting conditions. But for the most part, his skin is mostly blackish. But I really do enjoy that. You know, the skin color, excuse me, the color on his toenails as well as his claws, dirty yellow, bone white, or whatever. Looks really, really, really good. Long tail, once again, such a great, 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 great scope. And I know all you tail stand fans out there, <laughs> all you tail stand fans are, sh should be rejoicing right now. Because guess what? This guy doesn't need a tail stand. It doesn't need a tail stand, nor does it come with a tail stand. So I know all you tail stand supporters are loving that right now. I never really understood that. <laughs> I never understood that. But still, regardless of how I feel, trust me, if you don't like the tail stands, trust me, you ain't got to worry about that with this guy. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't need a tail stand. Godzilla is able to stand on his own without the native of a tail stand, which is awesome. Um, once again, such a great, 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 great sculpt. Um, let's talk about the dorsal plates. Now, the dorsal plates, once again, these are translucent dorsal plates, once again, because it is a light-up, right? But what they did, they actually applied a little bit of light blue tint all over the dorsal plates from the top of Godzilla's head. And not just, you know, for the dorsal plates that were light up, right? They did every little every dorsal plate on Godzilla's back with a light little tinge of blue. From the top of his head all the way down to the dorsal plates to the base of his tail all the way to the tip of his tail. So when you activate the light, now, mind you, when we first saw production photos of this figure, we thought that the figure was going to light up really true blue, kind of like the uh, Rick 64 30 centimeter. But actually, when you light it up, it actually lights up a more like a sky blue 
type of uh, bluish white color into the dorsal plate, which is how, which, which which is what how it was in the film anyway, quite frankly. So I believe they put like white LEDs into the dorsal plates, at least the main ones on Godzilla's back. So when you activate the feature, it comes off across as bluish white versus like a true, 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 true blue. Like I said, like the Rick 64, 30 centimeter, or Another Yujisakai piece, the GMK, the Rick version of that figure, I believe, came with true blue dorsal plates, even though it wasn't accurate to the film. But still, I like how with this, you know, with the translucent dorsal plates, and that's the thing, I love the translucent look when it comes to Godzilla dorsal plates on certain figures. So even if the feature does not work, even if the battery pad does not work and you're not, active, and you're not able to activate the light feature on this figure, even with it out being lit up, the dorsal plates look so awesome. The way they color them, the way they sculpted them. Once again, they've done a great job with the dorsal plates. And whether the battery pack works or not, it still looks good regardless. And that's a testament to how much care and craftsmanship and awesome, brilliant work X Plus has put in, into this figure. Once again, the sculpt looks amazing. The tree bark skin, the dark color of the skin, the toenails, the claws. Really is a nice, 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 nice Godzilla figure. And this figure stands, I want to say, at least... 29, but 30, 30 centimeters tall. Well, I wish it was 30, 30 inches tall. <laughs> uh, 30 centimeters. So when the kit was originally released, it was the exact same size. And I've seen some people wondering, um, because they've seen this figure up against other figures, and he does come a little bit, just a little bit short, just a little bit, but not by much. And people were wondering, you know, have did they ever solve that problem when it comes to shrinkage when they convert a resin piece into a vinyl piece? They kind of solved that problem with the 95 Godzilla, quite frankly, and the famous sculpt design of Iran, you know what I'm saying? And I have to tell you, I think they did the same thing here. I think they solved that problem because the original kit was like around 28 to 29 centimeters tall, and this is virtually the same size. So basically, X Plus solved that problem. So this one is really not a shorty. Like the original 30 centimeter 1984 Godzilla, you know what I mean? This actually is a good size. And he actually towers over the most popular, arguably the most popular Sakai piece in the line, the 91, which you'll see in size comparisons later on. But yeah, the tree bark skin, claws, toenails, the dorsal plates, the tail, the overall just stature and sculpt of Godzilla looks really, really awesome. Now, the main selling point of this Godzilla, in my opinion, is the face. The face looks so amazing. It looks scary. It looks imposing. It looks intimidating. And of course, this is a closed mouth. And you have the fangs just popping out on the upper um, upper left and right corners of Godzilla's upper jaw. You know what I'm saying? Just a ferocious look. And that's one thing I love about this Godzilla. That this one of the very few Godzillas that he actually looks more sinister with his mouth closed. Now, of course, we love Godzilla when he's roaring and he's got the mouth open and the tongue and the sharp light teeth just coming at you and blah, blah, blah. But there are a few Godzilla designs where he actually looks a whole lot sinister and a lot more meaner, or at least a lot meaner and more evil when his mouth is closed. And the 84 does that, the 64 does that, in my opinion, the 75 does that. Um, but what, what I love about this guy is the fact that he has that evil, serious, scary looking face. Even though he wasn't really an evil type of character in the film, you can't tell by looking at this Godzilla. The eyes are, uh, are painted really, really well. You know what I'm saying? With the hooded eyes. Once again, just gives off that overall great, great look of the 1984 Godzilla. And I'll say right now, this is the quintessential X Plus piece that you would get from the 1984 Godzilla or of the 1984 Godzilla. But once again, the main selling point for me is the face. You know, of course, the dorsal plates looks great. You know what I'm saying? The lighter feature looks awesome. You know, the sculpture, the sculpt of the figure, you know, the paint job or whatever. But to me, the main selling point of this piece is the 1984 Godzilla. And I have to say, I'm really excited for this piece. This piece really exceeded all my expectations. And this is a game changer release. You know what I'm saying? And I don't throw those words out there lightly when it comes to certain figures. Yes, I go overboard when it comes when it comes to describing these figures because I'm excited, right? But this is a new level of excitement when it comes to this figure. This figure is amazing. Game changing. Game changing game, game change, excuse me, to the point. Does it top the 91 Godzilla? As far as like the Yuji Sakai third centimeter line? Because to me, that's like the best one they've ever done. Does it top that? Mmm. Mmm. 
Mm. You know what? I'm going to save that to the very end. <laughs> I'm going to save that to the very end. But yeah, once again, such a great, 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 great piece. The face looks awesome. The teeth individually sculpted. The eyes are painted. So awesome. The doors are placed from the top of Godzilla's head to the tip of his tail. The overall tree bark skin, the color of his skin, the blackish color of his skin, the claws, the menacing claws, the toenails. Such an awesome, once again, the quintessential 1984 piece from X Plus that you will ever find. And once again, if you're locked in for the Rick, you're going to be in hard heaven when he arrives real soon. Or if you're locked in for the standard when he arrives next month, hopefully, you'll be in hard heaven once he arrives. Trust me when I say that. So you know what? Let's do a couple size comparisons. Don't want to drown a review in size comparisons. And you know what? The first size comparison, I'm going to bring up all the 84s I have in my collection from the Death of Riddle, 25 centimeter and the 30. And let's see how all the 84s look in one compiled shot. So let's go with the first size comparison with all the 84s in my collection right now. Okay, folks, this is the first size comparison. And yes, alongside the Man of the Hour, the 30 centimeter Yuji Sakai, yes, Shinjuku Sub Center Battle, Rick Exclusive Edition of the 1984 Godzilla. I have his other 1984 Godzilla X Plus counterparts. Yes, with the third centimeter, the original third centimeter, right there to um to the left, to the right. The highly underrated, in my opinion, 25 centimeter version, and of course the Rick exclusive edition of the Death of Real Down the foreground. And as you can see, they have done a phenomenal job. X Plus has with the 84. Um, now, when you see the Sakai up against the 30 centimeter, now, for the longest time, mind you, the 30 centimeter 84 was my very first X Plus figure. Yes, that figure was the one that started me on my X Plus collecting journey. And it looks great, but as you can see here with Sakai, with the added extra crisp detail on it, it kind of makes the 30 centimeter look a little bit toyish. And that's not a knock, trust me, that is not a, any sort of disrespect, you know what I'm saying? That is a still, it still is a great figure, but when you compare the two, obviously, the Sakai looks more like a miniaturized suit version of the 84 Godzilla. You know what I'm saying? Um, once again, not, not a knock against the 30 centimeter, but obviously the Sakai is better. And of course, you have the 25 centimeter version, you know what I'm saying, that, that does have traces of the Cybot, which I do love, quite frankly. I do love the Cybot 84, and it has traces of the Cybot in its face or whatever. Um, once again, that figure, in my opinion, is highly underrated and very, very misunderstood because a lot of people don't really seem to care for that figure. It, it, they find it to be a dud when it comes to 84 pieces. But I really do enjoy it. And of course, you have the Death of Real. Once again, this is my favorite Death of Real in the entire line. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I had to go with, with the uh, mini reactor. You know what I'm saying? Because it's feeding time. <laughs> um, also, if you had the Death of Real Rick version, um, I think the if you try to detach the the um, the uh, reactor and try to put it in the, in the Sakai's hands, um, you probably can make that work. You know what I'm saying? You probably can make that work, but I don't suggest you do that because if you take it away from the death of real, you have to reattach it with glue, and you, you don't want to ruin a nice X plus piece. A nice X plus piece, excuse me. Um, but once again, this is such a great shot of all the 84s. I have in my collection. Pretty much these are all the 84s that S Plus has ever done. Of course, they've done a reissue of the 30 centimeter. You know what I'm saying? You know, in a in some of a darker paint scheme or whatever with light up dorsal plates, you know, whatever. Now, the only ones we're missing is, of course, the favorite sculptor's line. And I highly advocate that they do, that they go with the Monster Maker 28 version. You know what I'm saying? And produce that in the favorite sculptor's line. And, of course, the dream figure, which I know will make a lot of Godzilla fans happy. Principal among them, my fellow Godzilla YouTubers, Brutezilla, Butch Bollinger, Gojira 851, Matt, Matt Jacobson, Phil the Kaiju, Phil the Kaiju King, Philip Frazier. I know they are huge 84 fans, just like myself. Um, and I know they will love an 84 Gigantic from X+. Plus. And you know what? I think we will see that. I think we will see an 84 Gigantic from X Plus at some point, you know what I'm saying? Because there's really no point of doing, you know, the ones in between the 89 and 95 because it looks so very similar. There's no sense of doing 94 because that's so similar to the 95. There's no point of doing the 92 because that's so similar to the 89. But as I mentioned earlier, there's a really a good difference that separates the 84 from the rest of the Heisei Godzilla that I think 
that you can do, and I think they should do, an 84 gigantic. And I think we will see that at some point, especially if they were to go back to the Heisei. So that's pretty much it with the first size comparisons with all the 84s I have in my collection. As you can see, they have done a great job with what they have done thus far. Even though, like I said, the 25 centimeter may not be high up on people's list, but it's definitely high up on, on mine, and Sakai is definitely at the highest. So let's go with the last size comparison. I'm going to bring up a couple more Sakai pieces for my collection, and let's see how they look together. So let's go with the next size comparison right now. Okay, folks, this is the last size comparison, and yes, I figured I'd bring a couple other Sakai 30 minute pieces from X+. Plus. In the size comparison with the 84, and of course I have the, quite frankly, the most popular one, yes, on to the left, the 91, the Hokkaido version, and of course I have to the right, the popular, in my opinion, GMK, yes, Sakai, yes, and as you can see, they look so great together, kind of ironic that this uh, probably is Godzilla in his most villainous roles. Um, less the 84, because I don't really consider 84 a, really a true villain, Mind you, he's a menace and he's the antagonist of the story, but he's nowhere near the villainous uh, evil creatures that he was in GMK or the more hateful demon in uh, 91. But as you can see, they look so well together. Um, I didn't want to bring all of the uh, Sakai pieces I have in my collection because obviously I didn't want to cloud the shot. Now, I have pretty much every single one of them, you know, the 89, uh, the 92, of course, the 95 um, and the uh, 54. Um, but I, I want to bring these uh, these together because, quite frankly, these are my top three favorite Sakai pieces in my collection. Yes, they are. Nothing against the 95, the 89, the 92, Shin or whatever. But these three are in my top top three. Um, and as you can see, they look so well together. Detail on all of them is awesome. Even the GMK. And I know a lot of people tend to look towards the 2002, you know what I'm saying, which is an awesome figure. But some people tend to overlook the GMK in favor of the 2002. But the GMK is a great figure in its own right. And of course, the popular 91 that has reigned supreme for so long as pretty much everybody's favorite Sakai piece. Not everybody, but a good majority of us Xbox collectors look to the 91 as the... Uh, the measuring stick, if you will. You know, the uh, the flag bearer, the standard flag bearer, the top doll, the head honcho, the big kahuna, numero uno, and all that good stuff. And once again, I might as well address it now. Does the 91 still reign as my number one Sakai with the advent of this 84? Mm. <sighs> oh my God. Uh, uh, uh. You know what? You know what? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it to the very end. I know I've been teasing it, I've been teasing it, but you know what? I'm gonna save it to the very end, which I will talk about that momentarily. But once again, this is such a great, great size comparison. Even if you have the 84 up against, like I said, the 2002, the 54, the 89, the uh, 92, the 95, he is such a great and welcome addition to this awesome line, the X Plus Yusakai. 30 centimeter line modeling collection. Yes, 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 yes. So you know what? Let's finish up with my final thoughts of this figure and of this review. And I will address finally, does 91 still reign supreme as my top favorite Sakai or has the 84 overtaken him? And you know what? Let's address that right now. Okay, folks, I'm back with my final thoughts of the X Plus Yuji Sakai 30 centimeter Shinjuku Sub Sino Battle Rick Exclusive Edition version of the 1984 Godzilla. Once again, this is such an awesome and amazing, brilliant, spectacular piece. 10 out of 10. I don't see anything wrong with this figure. I don't see anything embellished or whatever. Once again, this is the quintessential 1984 Godzilla piece from X Plus that you will ever have that they have ever done. So trust me, if you locked in for a pre order for the Rick, or the standard, trust me, you'll be in hog heaven and ecstatic once he arrives. Once again, S Plus has set the bar so high with this release. A game-changing release, in my opinion. Now, with the subsequent Sakai's that came along the way, you know, with the 2002, the 95, um, the reissue of the 89, the GMK, you know, whatever. The 91 has set the bar so high when that figure was first released back in 2015, I believe. And ever since then, at least for me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, whenever they would make a subsequent Sakai after that, the 91 was looked upon as the measuring stick. Like, okay, this new Sakai is coming, but how will it look up against the 91? 
You know what I'm saying? We have been doing that for so long, ever since the 91 ha has been, you know, introduced and blah, blah, blah. Because the 91 is such an awesome piss, uh, excuse me, an awesome figure. Sheer perfection, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Not to mention that it is one of my most favorite Gazel designs. You know what the 84 is, too? On my list, the 91 comes in at, like, number two behind the 64. I think the 84 comes in, like, number five or something like that. But both suit designs are on my top ten favorites of Gazel designs. You know what I mean? So, I have to address this question. And I've been teasing it for the longest time during the course of this video. And I have to ask myself... And I'm going to answer this question. Does the 84 top the 91? Now, mind you, this is from my perspective. This is from my opinion. And, of course, not everybody's going to agree with me. Not everybody's going to see the same things that I see. Maybe you do once you get this guy in your hands. But I have to say this. The 84, in my opinion, does top the 91. Yes, I said it. I said it. And I stand by it. I don't care if you hate me for it. I don't care if you, if I lose some subs because of that, you know what I mean? Or some followers or whatever the case may be. But in my opinion, they have done a phenomenal job with this 84. They does top the 91. And yes, of course, I know there's some people out there that's going to say, well, you know, you just got it. It's new. You're probably in the honeymoon phase. And maybe I am. You know what I'm saying? That could be a factor. But I spent some time with this figure. As a matter of fact, when I first got the figure, I took the 84 and the 91. I spent a good majority on like one of my days off, Saturday or Sunday. I think it was Sunday. And I spent the majority of the day just looking at the two. Like I just spent the whole day just looking and comparing the two. And after spending some substantial time with both of them, I just like the 84 more. I think they've done a great job with the 84. The main selling point for me, why I view the 84 over the 91, even though it's so slightly, is because at my core, I'm a Godzilla fan, right? But at my core, I prefer Godzilla as the hateful, nasty, evil villain. You know what I'm saying? The antagonist, the menace of the story or the situation. And the one thing I love about the 84 Godzilla is, like, he looks very scary. You know what I'm saying? He looks very scary. You know, there have been other scary Godzilla, scary looking Godzilla out there, you know, with the GMK, Shin, or whatever. Maybe the 64, if you want to put him into the, into the situation. If anything, I look at him as more of an evil-looking version of Godzilla, the 64. But when it comes to just downright scary-looking or intimidating, just sheer scary-looking Godzillas, I look at the 84, Shin, and maybe GMK as the top three. And with the way they have sculpted Godzilla's face here on this figure, that just evil look, even though he's not an evil character in the film, that would ha that is what puts me over the top of why I choose the 84 over the 91. And you know what? There's no shame in losing to an awesome figure like this. The 91 has been, in my opinion, the reigning heavyweight champion of the 37 inch Sakai line for myself and a lot of different people. I know there are a couple of people that, that don't really get the appeal of the 91. They don't really understand what the hype is up, um, behind it. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. But a good majority of Xbox collectors look to that figure, the 91, as the quintessential 37 inch Sakai piece. But I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, the 84 tops it. The 84 tops it. And in my opinion, for this to do that in the second month of the year, God, we are in for a fun ride with what they have in store for us coming later down the line. So I'm looking forward to seeing what else, you know, they may bring to us. Of course, we already know a lot of stuff that's coming. But consider how awesome they put, awesomeness they put into this figure. Can you imagine how the gigantic Mecha Godzilla is going to be? How the Godzilla 1993 is going to be? The gigantic Burning Godzilla 2019 is going to be? Once again, this right here is the figure to be. Yes, this is the figure to be. Yes, it is setting the bar so high, as I said. And once again, the gigantic Mecha Godzilla, the 93 Godzilla, and the other products that S Plus has in store for us for the rest of the year. Better bring that A game to top this guy. It's kind of ironic with the 91 reigning so long as the heavyweight champion of the Sakai line. Now this guy has claimed the title, in my opinion. Right now, he's the figure to beat. And you know what? Like I said, there's no shame in losing to this awesome 84. And once you get your hands on this figure, where it's the Rip Bull or the Standard, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Trust me when I say that. So that pretty much concludes my review of the X Plus 30 centimeter Yuji Sekai, Rick exclusive edition of the Shinjuku sub Battle version of the 1984 Godzilla. Based off his appearance in the super cool, iconic 
Godzilla film that kickstarted the awesome Heisei Godzilla film series, The Return of Godzilla 1984, also known as Godzilla 1985. If you have any questions, hold me down in the comment section. Hit me on Facebook via Leslie P. Chambers. We definitely go from there. Yes, once again, great figure. Really is. Once again, I did not expect to love this figure as much as I did, nor did I expect this figure would top the 91. And you know what? I love you, 91. I really do. I'm looking at him right now. I'm sorry, dude, but you know what? You know, good things sometimes don't always last forever, but you're still a great figure. He is still a great figure. Don't get me wrong. Just because the 84, in my opinion, trumps the 91 does not mean to suggest that the 91 is a bad figure. Far from it. But considering how awesome the 91 has been for so long, can you imagine how awesome this guy has to be in order to beat him? So that's a testament of how awesome the 84 is. But once again, there's no shame in losing to the 84. But once again, S Plus has done a phenomenal job with the sculpt of this guy, the paint job, the Rick exclusive feature. I'm saying even the box artwork is awesome, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? And once again, we have been asking for this guy for so long. And it just shows with this figure, as well as the 2002, because we were highly advocating for that. The S Plus is listening. They know what we want. They may not get to it when we want them to get to it, but eventually they will give us what we're asking for, what we want. And this figure is a definite a testament to that. Trust me when I say that. And like I said, if you get your hands on this Rick version or the standard version, trust me, if you locked in for a pre-order for one or either both of these figures, you you will be in hog heaven and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once this awesome guy arrives in your hands. Once again, so much stuff is coming here on the channel. Still got a few reviews I got to do. I still got to kickstart, you know, my live streams. And you know what? I think my next live stream, aside from the 1960s part two um, live stream stuff that I got to do, I'm definitely going to do one devoted to the Yuji Sakai line with the advent of this Kai coming into the line. So look for that to come real, real, real soon. Not to mention my duties on Collect All Monsters. You know what I'm saying? Our next episode is next month in March and it's dedicated to tour photography with my great friends David Ed Dopko and John Ruffin will pretty much be the focus of that. And we'll try to pick their brains and stuff, uh, stuff and like that about, you know, what they suggest and tips that they may offer other people and what they do as far as like creating these awesome images. Once again, that's Collect All Monsters. Once again, new live streams coming. You know what I'm saying? Probably when probably when the gigantic Mecha Godzilla come out, I'm probably gonna do a, a live stream devoted to Mecha Godzilla and all the figures and movies and stuff like that. As well as King Ghidra. I wanna do one devoted to King Ghidra. There's so much stuff I wanna do. And trust me, what I got planned, hopefully you will be enjoying that either right here on Let's Chambers Kaiju Review slash Summit Kaiju or on Collect All Monsters. Either way, I hope we'll keep you very entertained for, for the foreseeable future. And get this guy. Get the 1984 Godzilla Sakai 30 cm Shinjuku sub Battle version where it's the Rick Bull or the standard. You cannot go wrong with this figure. Ain't it right, Godzilla? So I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see y'all again on that Speaking Move review. All right? Y'all take it easy.